one of the biggest tips that I would tell the student athletes is keep having that same, I mean, continue to have that same mentality, uh, in my preference, mama mentality. Because mm-hmm. once your time is up and you go into the real world of working for a job, you will already be motivated and ready to compete for that next position or compete in your job. Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And just so that you all know, the purpose of this show is to share stories, strategies, and successes, ultimately to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. That's what I'm all about. I'm a student athlete the development consultant and i'm all about serving and supporting this next generation so that's the purpose of this platform that's the purpose of this podcast and that's why we're here so if you just tapped in for the first time i want to encourage you to take a look at seeing some of the other people that you know we've had on the show some other guests but today's guest is is really phenomenal y'all this 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 is my brother and i'm definitely excited to bring him to the stage i'm gonna share a little bit about him before i bring him out but man, th- this this is probably this is one of the first people that I really connected with in this realm of athletics and student athlete development. And then, man, after we connected, we just began to be- build a build a solid friendship, a solid brotherhood, a uh, solid relationship. Uh, and a little bit about him is, is is he is he's in his second year at, at Southeast Missouri State University, and he's serving as the coordinator of student athlete development He's for, for baseball track and field, tennis, and softball. Y'all, that's a good handful of sports right there. In addition to that, prior to coming to Southeastern Missouri, Mr. Streeter served as a compliance student service services intern at the Southwestern Athletic Conference office. While working at the SWAC, he worked closely with reviewing eligibility and waivers from each institution, along with being the co-advisor for the SWAC SAC. He also assisted in the creation of the SWAC Building Champions for Life program. And I'm going to share just a little bit more about my brother, Mr. Streeter, because I want y'all to get this context because this brother, man, he, he don't play no games. And then prior to his time at the SWAC, Streeter also served as a compliance intern at Clemson University, where he worked closely with the NLIs and Financial Aid Awards. Without further ado, I want to bring to the stage the virtual stage that is my brother and today's guest none other than mr jeremiah streeter jeremiah Hello, what's man. going on what's going on brother how you doing today i'm doing good i'm good man bless and highly favor how you doing man i'm i'm, I'm good man I'm, I'm golden i'm I'm golden man Thank man you, yeah man. just you know just 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 trying to just trying to stay warm in, in this weather i see you got the turtleneck on i ain't mad at you man, it look good man. on you doc man i stepped outside it was 20 something degrees i was like cool and what's funny is a lot of my student athletes was making fun of me because I like to keep my office hot. So I got a heater at the bottom and it feels like a sun. And as soon as you uh. step out, <laughs> fresh breeze. But hey, I can't complain. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, man, so Jeremiah, with, with you being just in this in this space and you you brought up your student athletes and we're, we're definitely, you know, we're definitely going to dive in into your story. Uh, but I, I want you just just to share a little bit. Is, is there anything I missed? Because I know I hit hit the high points on your bio, but is there anything I missed that you just want to share with the people? Please take a few moments. Oh, no, you 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 definitely hit the spot with a lot of things. Um, like I said, I mean, just as my bio said, you know, I've done dig and dug around in different areas, but um, compliance and academics is like my two primary things that I really try to focus on the most. Um, mainly academics and life skills, um, mm-hmm. personally. Because um, one of the biggest things that I really find myself trying to get into is make an impact into student athletes' lives, just like um, people before me had did, um, mm-hmm. just to get me to where I'm at, to where I'm at right now. Um, but outside of that, you you did great with my bio. I really appreciate that. Pow, pow. <laughs> <laughs> pow, pow, pow. definitely <laughs> man oh man yeah man De- definitely definitely so you you brought up your student athletes a little bit earlier so man just talk about what that transition looks like now in these times like how do how do things look different or or how are student athletes just responding to you know covid and now 
where, you know, they might be trying to transition back from COVID. We might have a shutdown. So what does that look like on, on, on the other side from your end? Ooh, so with COVID transitioning, it's very, it's very hard. It's, it's very hard for me to really explain. Um, if I had to do percentages, I say at least 45% of the student athletes are really taking the transition very well. And that other 65, I mean, that other 35, 65, whatever it is, is taking a big toll. It's taking a big toll on them. Um, some student athletes, it really, to be honest with you, it's kind of like a learning point because I didn't understand for, me, for it being my first year going into my second year. Of course, mm -hmm. you don't understand your student athletes a lot. And you don't understand what they're used to. If online is very good for them or if they're really an um, in-person type, um, type of guy. So... Mm -hmm. For me, it was it was kind of like a uh, slap in the face, especially going into the spring semester. Because at first, you know, you think everything is very smooth and easy going, and then all of a sudden, you just get on final grades and just like, oh. So going into the fall semester, um, I, I would pretty much say we we as a team, me and my um, collect team, the two of us, I mean the three of us, we all collectively try to figure out a plan and a strategy to really make sure that our student athletes is getting the best resources, the best tools mm -hmm. to make sure that they accommodate everything that they need to be successful in the classroom. And I would honestly say um, after this semester, um, we survived by a landslide. Um, a wow. lot of our student athletes had came back stronger than what they did for, um, from the spring semester. Mm -hmm. And I believe honestly that we um, we 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 definitely we definitely see some type of transition and some type of motive with the student athletes. Now the biggest thing overall is trying to get the student athletes motivated for this upcoming uh, this upcoming semester. Because mm -hmm. not only are not only is academics going to be a big part, but we also do have this spring. Uh, all all fall sports are going to be playing this upcoming spring. So it's just like okay, now we got all of these sports going on. Now we got all of this academic going on. How can we make sure that we keep these student athletes motivated to keep doing what they're doing in class, on the field, and making sure that they're not stressed? Because I'm telling you, this is where mental is going to come for. I mean, come at with all of our student athletes. Where's your mentality? How are you going to withhold all of these things? Are you going to mm -hmm. come talk to us about all of these things so we can help you out, coordinate? Or do you want us to reach out to the counseling people for for all of this stuff? A lot of these things is really going to trigger mm -hmm. down this upcoming semester. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a challenge. And that's one thing I like. I like challenges because it, it gets you it gets you out your seat and make you think a lot, think about a lot <laughs> of things. So, hey, I'm, I'm here for it. We here for it. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I mean, yeah. And I really love that you like you said that and talked about challenges and talked about you being here for it. So with, with the understanding of now you're, you're working in, you know, life skills, you're helping develop student athletes on, on a holistic level, you know, the, the mental, the, the life skills aspect, the life after sport, the academics, all those things. So how were you when, when you were in that, when you were in their spot, when you was the student athlete, like talk, talk a little bit about your story. I want to, I want to hear how you, how you got here. Oh man. To be honest with you, I like telling my story because my story is totally opposite of what these students, what what I'm trying to pre um, present to um, my student athletes. So coming from coming from undergrad, Alabama State University, I was a track track and field athlete. Um, a lot of times, going into my junior year, I um, I had to have surgery on my hip. So when I had my surgery on my hip. Um, it was kind of like a not a career in this season because I could I definitely competed my senior year, but it I wasn't the same. Mm -hmm. So at that time I was kind of like a lost soul because at first I wanted to be a I was sports has always been embedded into me. Uh, I either wanted to coach I already knew I wasn't gonna make it into the professional world. So NBA was out the drink uh, after pitcher. I'm too short. Um, <laughs> track. Uh, I was getting rolled up on during college, so it didn't like affect me as much. <laughs> so a lot of those things already went out the window. Um, but I was stuck because trying to get trying to get into the uh, education um, majors, I kept failing this test. I kept failing this test. 
So one day, uh, one of my uh, academic, my academic advisor, um, Renisha Hawk, she pulled me to the side and was just like, hey, Jeremiah, I really think you should focus on SAC and look at these things. So I was like, okay, cool. I joined SAC and I ended up becoming the vice president. Mm. And when I became vice president, it basically opened up the doors for me to see a lot of other things that goes on within the athletic department. So that goes for the academic world, that goes with compliance, that goes with marketing, all of the things, and then working closely with the AD. That was like one of the biggest things for me overall because one of my ultimate goals was to be an athletic director at the end of the day. Mm. So um, after close to my senior year, I decided to you know, apply for grad school. And one of my um, fraternity brothers, he hit me up randomly. He was just like, hey, Jeremiah, um, there's a there's a guy that's over that work in the athletic department. He's um, looking for a graduate assistant position. Um, I think I'm going to put you in contact with him. So I got in contact with Jonathan Jones, and he talked a little bit more about what he actually does. So I'm thinking in my head, OK, student athlete development, what exactly is that? Because at my institution, we didn't we had seminars we had probably like one or two seminars every year but mm-hmm. we never really had anything consistent as far as like what should we do to get our student athletes where we need to get to life after college mm-hmm. and at first i was just like okay this is interesting i i never i, I really never thought over and beyond that so i applied for the graduate assistant position never got it but i also was like okay well I know somebody else that um, works at Clemson in the department. Let me reach out to them. So mm. went over to compliance, and that's how that transitioned over to student athlete development to compliance. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm getting the compliance. I'm learning all about these NCAA rules and regulations, but I'm still interested in learning about how to develop these student athletes. Like, what is this program about? How did they develop these programs? So oftentimes I would go over to um, go over to their department and just listen talk to talk to the head person over there talk to jonathan hey what are what programs are y'all running what how are you what are you doing with these student athletes to make sure that they get to wherever they need to get to um what what type of resources are you guys using and once i sat down and utilized it it was crazy because i had class one day um i mean i had a class project and one of our class project consisted of you know going to an institution or going to a school that basically teaches you i mean you have to do like a whole demonstration of what you want to do in your career field. So mm. ironically, I went to <laughs> Alabama State uh, for this class and the travel wasn't bad. It was only four hours. So I went back to Alabama State and I did a full presentation of what everything that Clemson does. Well, not everything what Clemson does, but like different categories and whatever. So I did that at Alabama State. And the ironic thing about it was the student athletes enjoyed it and they said that they wish they had something like that more often because it's more wow. it's not more so about lecturing to them and that's one thing i have realized student athletes they don't mind the events that you give them they just don't want to they just don't want to hear you talk majority of the time they're more so about actively engaging talking conversing doing different activities to make sure that they don't stay bored so mm-hmm. once i find when i once i found out about that i was like all right cool so then that's when I transitioned over to the SWAC office, uh, working with um, closely with Jason Cable, which is my boss and Adina Pula. And we really didn't do much um, like in person because we you working with 10 institutions. So going into next year, I was supposed to, you know, have my first in-person uh, SWAC SAC activity event with them. And mm-hmm. Lord behold, I got blessed with a job here at Southeast Missouri State University by Robert Graham. And when he hired me and told me exactly what, what I um, what he wanted, I instantly just went at it. Everything that I learned from Clemson pretty much just triggered down the transition over here to me. And ever since then, it's just like, now what can I do? I, I'm at this position. Some of this stuff that I didn't learn during undergrad, I don't want to get my student athletes not to be led on in the same position as me because at the end of the day these student athletes don't know what they want to do or they don't have the right guidance to get to where they um, get to where they want to be so what can i do to make sure that these student athletes got the right tools the resources the uh, right knowledge to make sure that they are okay like after college because i always tell my student athletes 
we always gonna push you to um, go go into the professional world as an athlete if you want to go that route. But it's always good to um, have a plan B or a second route to make sure that you're not lost in the, uh, after after your athleticism is over with. Mm-hmm. But that's that's like the that's the biggest epitome for me is just making sure that student athletes are ground and stable and making sure that they are in the right path to get to wherever they need to get to. Um, it doesn't matter what area it is. Just tell me what you want and I'll make sure that I try to find the resources for you. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. And when we, with you saying that, man, j- especially that last piece that you just dropped, you said, tell me what it is. And, you know, I'm going to try to find the resources for you. I think so often a lot of times that there the, the resources out there. But sometimes if, if, if we're on the student athletes, if we're on the student athlete side, we have to open our mouth. And we have to ask for it. But if we're also in, in you know, individuals like your position and others in the athletic region, we, we also have to let them know that we have those resources. Because, right. I mean, you know, so many messages getting thrown around day after day and people pulling them everywhere and don't even mention followers and all that other stuff. That's a whole nother conversation. But, man, I like I, I think your journey is really amazing. And even with your journey and, and, and with what you share, I want to now just j- just throw this out there. Mm-hmm. What's what's one thing that you wish you would have known when you began your career? And let me give, give me give, just give some context, because I have people that reach out to me all the time. They're like, hey, man, how do I how do I get into sports? And, you know, hey, how do we get into college athletics and all this other stuff? So I want to ask you, what's one thing that you wish you had known when you began your career? I wish you would ask me what would you ask me about before I got into my career. Oh, okay. Um, hey, 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 talk, talk about that. Yeah, talk about that. Before, <laughs> the, before is is what brought me to what I need to know um, now in my career. But mm. the biggest thing overall before is networking, uh, networking, 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 networking. Um, working in college athletics, I realized that. A degree could get you so far, but you connect, you're connect. you not connecting with anyone that doesn't know anybody in that department is going to play a big picture. Um, mm. So now I always tell my student athletes, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Make sure that you reach out to these people. It's very big for you to make, make connections with all of these people. Because our circle is only so big, I mean, only so big, but mm. everybody has some type of um, connection with somebody. So it's always good to have five people that you know, because that five people may know the uh, other five people and they can just bring bring it like some type of connection like that. So networking, networking, networking. But now since I'm actually in my career, um, somebody, I wish somebody would have told me, and I wouldn't even say that it's nobody's, because uh, everybody is going through the same situation, but I wish somebody would tell me exactly, you know, the prepare prepare not to have a successful event but know that if you do fail understand the reason why and figure out figure out a way to make sure that that um that that next event be 10 times better than the uh, other one um Mm. because i done had going into last semester we had one great event with you and like i said the event that you did was phenomenal the information that we had got um, back from the student athletes was outstanding. And then doing a follow up, we had our very next event and it was just like a slap in the face. Um, We went from we went from having close to 300 student athletes on the call to knocking it down to five to 10. And at first I thought in my head, okay, what triggered down to the point where we had a mass food to not having too many um too too many people showing up. What did I do wrong in my path? What what subject? I mean, what what was wrong with the subject? If it wasn't anything wrong with the subject, how did I um reach out to the student athlete? Was it intentional to not did I did I not draw any attention to them to actually um come to the event or whatever? And what do I need to do now to uh, bring to draw some type of attention to the student athlete? Um, a lot of times people ask me, do you make your um, events mandatory? And I always tell them it's kind of hard for me to make um, events mandatory unless the coaches want to make it. So I always give it, give mm. it up to the coaches to see, hey, is this a um, topic that you want the 
student athletes to um, participate in or not. Uh, it's totally up to you, but this is what's going on on this certain day. But that's one of the biggest things overall, just trying to figure out, okay, if you fail, what did I do wrong? How can I fix this? And then turn around, making, making, making changes to the adjustments that you already made for that next event and try to trigger down to figure out how to make sure that this um, next event be a little bit more successful than what it was before. Yeah, man. So I, I, oh yeah, yeah, man. I, so I took, I took away two, two things from what you just shared. Um, I, I, you know, outside of the fact you said that I, I did a pretty good job on the presentation, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but the, but the two things, and I, I definitely appreciate that because, like, like I told you, man, I got I got nothing but love and respect for you, and and you know, I, I definitely lo love your student athletes over there. Shout out to Celeste, shout out to Grace, uh, man, I can't remember everybody else, but shout out to man, shout, shout out to the whole CMO family, man. But uh. Yeah, man, because what, what what you really just hit on is the fact that it's it takes a community like we've heard the phrase. It takes a community to raise a child or it takes a community to raise a, a, a student. It takes a community to raise a student athlete. Right. Yeah. So you you saying that and and, you know, if if you throw in an event and then you get the buy in from the coach, and you get the buy in over here from also, you know, other academic advisors, et cetera. Then if everybody comes together, then, you know, that that's something that that makes events successful on campus. But even outside of that, man, that's what creates a different level of the other point I was going to say that you really hit on was accountability. Because accountability, you know, when we put accountability into place, then now we have a certain expectation that we're looking for from a coach, from a student athlete, from, from a Jeremiah Streeter, you know, from people in these positions and we have accountability. And like you said, you went back to the drawing board. You looked at what you did. You were seeing how you can make things better. And I think sometimes to my student athletes out there, sometimes we have to look at ourselves and say, how can I do better? My coach is out there. Some of us have to look at ourselves and say, how can I do better? AD, SWA, you know, down the line, we all have to be honest with ourselves and we have to begin to assess how did we do and now based on how we did, how can we improve so that we continue to serve and support at a high level? Man, so I really I really just love what, what you shared and what you really hit on there, Mr. Streeter. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. it was like I said, it's this year. This year was definitely like a test and trial because, you know, COVID transitioned a lot of things um, mm -hmm. that went from I had a whole a whole semester full of events full of in-person uh, events. Mm -hmm. and you get a slap in the face. Uh, and like I said, you can't blame nobody. I can't get mad. Um, but you get a slap in the face and say that all of your events got to get transitioned from in-person to Zoom. And, you know, student athletes, I'll be honest with you, students are Zoomed out. <laughs> <laughs> they are Zoomed out. They have to go to class on Zoom. They have to go, they have to go inside of a classroom and still sit there and watch people, I mean, watch the uh, teacher on Zoom. So... Mm. If you got a special event that's going on on Zoom right now, student athletes, they're just like, okay, I'm, I'm over it. I'm tired. When, is, when are we going to actually be able to do this stuff in person? It's a different landslide, but when can we do this stuff in person? But that's, that's the, like I said, this year, this year is kind of like a, it's a test and trials. It's very, it really tests your patience because you really don't know what route is going to take you. Um, and that just go that goes in all areas. Like you really don't know if 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 anything is gonna go right, you don't know if anything is gonna go wrong. The only thing that you can really do now is do the test of fire and see where it takes you. Because at the end of the day, hmm. you can fall, you can fall, you can fall about five times, but you can always get up at any time. So hmm. get up at any time and keep pushing. What advice would you give to someone wanting to pursue a career similar to similar to yours and fo following the streets of Doc Streeter? What what, <laughs> what 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 advice would you would you would you give to to that individual? Um, I always I always use my favorite quote: "Stay consistent. Stay consistent to what you speak into existence." Um, why I say that is because every time I every time I say that I want to do something, that's when I go to that drawing board. And be like, okay, I want to do, I want to get this done, I want to get that done. What do I need to do to get there? So get the right mm -hmm. things down. Okay, I need to reach out to this person. I need to reach out to that person. I need to make sure that these students, um, these, I need to make sure that I'm keeping myself motivated to get to where I need to, um, 
to get to wherever I need to get to. So that's where that consistency consistency come uh, come at. I need to motivate motivate myself to get to a higher standard. I need to motivate myself to do whatever I need to do. I need to reach out to these people. I need to find whatever I need to do just to get to my ultimate goal. So why I say uh, stay consistent, stay, be consistent to what uh, to what you're speaking to is this. That's what I mean. It's kind of like you you drawing you drawing a big picture of what you want to do, but now you're trying to figure out how you're trying to do it. But if you go across the board and just be like, okay, I want to do this, but you don't have like an exact plan for it, then you you what you're speaking into existence is just something that's on your mind, but you're not actually putting in the actual work for it. So if mm. you actually say what you want to do and you actually put the work towards, I mean, put the work um, towards it, that's when you start seeing the consistency because results start piling up. Um, so one thing that I would really want to um, tell tell people about, you know, whatever you plan on doing um, as far as trying to get into this career, networking is one of, it's going to be one of the biggest factors. When you network, that's when you get to get more resources, um, more reliability, more, a lot of things that... Mm -hmm trigger downs to get you to a good higher standard. You know, you start to get to feel better about yourself than you did uh, way, uh, way before because you're using the resources that they that they use to be very successful. Not mm. saying that we're trying to steal anybody's like ideas <laughs> or anything. That, that, that's, not my, that's not what I'm saying. But as far as like very using their resources and they're actually giving you the blueprint to help you get to where you need to get to take advantage of it. Certainly, so that's, that's going to be the only. That's, I'm not. I'm not saying that's that's the only way, but that's going to be the best way to get yourself successful to get to where you need to get to, um, especially in this career field. Yeah, man, I, I I love that, and and you said not to steal anybody's stuff, but that's one thing that I've realized is really super cool and and really dope just in this student athlete development space and working with student athletes is as long as it's not on the field, as long as it's not on the court, everybody is willing to share. Like they're willing to share all the resources. They're willing to share all the webinars, all the trainings. Like everybody is so open and f so just willing to make sure that these student athletes get, get what they need. But, right. you know, it, professionally, personally, all that good stuff. So, uh, I mean, I, I think that's a major, a major factor too. Uh, to just take into account. And and with that said, we're going we're gonna to take a quick break, uh, Jeremiah. And, and, and really quick, for everybody out there listening, all the ballers listening, uh, if you have not taken a chance to take advantage, you want to definitely go to bit.ly forward slash the number seven ways you can. So you can download this free ebook geared towards student athlete development. We're showing you seven ways that you can better serve and support your student athletes. We're talking about mental health. We're talking about some life skills stuff. We go in a little bit deeper than that. We got some strategies in there. But once again, bit.ly forward slash seven ways you can get your free ebook, or you can just go on my Instagram bio, click that link and get it there. Mr. Streeter, so we got you in the studio. Man, we, we, we heard a little bit about your story. Now we're about to run you through the two minute drill. Hey, look, yeah, look, look man. I ain't worked out in a minute, so you know you're gonna have to be you gonna have to take it real slow for me. But I'm ready. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. That's funny. Hey man, you ran track, so I think you're good. I, I, I think I think you're good. So uh, for everybody out there, this might be a first time listening to Two Minute Drills, just where we you know, have opportunity, where we have a little bit of fun with our guests. We, we bring them in, we ask a, a few, a handful of rapid fire questions uh, just to see a different side uh, of, of our guests that we have here today. So Mr. Streeter, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Favorite food? Seafood. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay, king crab or snow crab? Okay, okay. Cajun season or what? Just themed? Cajun season. Okay, I was about to say, just themed is basic. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's your Netflix show of preference? Ooh, I just got uh, Stranger Things. See mm. Yeah. Okay, Stranger okay. Things and Cobra Kai. Uh, I'm sorry, I just I just started watching uh, Cobra Kai. And really? Season three. Yeah. Really? Nice. Wow, I need to check it out. Okay, okay, I might, I might, might check it out just because you said so. Uh, what's the, what's, what's the last book you read? Uh, Twenty One Centuries of Leadership 
I'm gonna have to check out the title of it. I just finished that book. I'm not too long ago. It's in my car too. Twenty-one centuries of leadership. Yes. Oh wow. It's Twenty-one. It's Twenty-one centuries. Twenty-one century of something leadership. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to try to find the book. It's literally okay. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. No worries. Uh, what, what's, what's your favorite podcast? Beyond the Ball. <laughs> <laughs> people, swear, I, I promise you, people think I put that in there to set people up. I just always ask because people, I just like to hear people's uh, podcasts. Oh, man. No, 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 but no, uh, it's, it's yours. It's yours. Like, I don't listen to a lot of people's podcasts. Um, okay. So, yeah. Respect, respect. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And 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 and, a, and last question: What's one tip that you want to give to a student athlete? One tip. One tip. Take your time. Take your time. Okay. One tip. Okay. I would say one of the biggest tips that I would tell the student athletes is keep having that same, I mean, continue to have that same mentality um, in my preference, mama mentality, because mm-hmm. once your time is up and you go into the real world of working for a job, you will already be motivated and ready to compete for that next position or compete in your job Um, because that's what a lot of jobs look for now is that competitive um, mentality that competitive mindset so please take advantage of your sport please take advantage of what you do as a student athlete because in in the long run once you do uh, step into the workforce you'll be able to take initiative and um, acknowledge of what you do just based off of how athletic you, I mean, not, not saying athletically, but that, that mindset of uh, competing and being an athlete, athletic is going to um, definitely overflow over into your workforce for sure. Uh, so please um, take advantage of it. And yeah. There it is. There it is. Mr. Jeremiah Streeter made it through the two minute drill. Now, now go Jeremiah. Now go ahead and just share with them how they can, uh, how they can find you, how they can follow you or how they can uh, connect with you. Oh, no problem. So, um, you can catch me up on Instagram. Um, my Instagram is S P I F three underscores. And you can also find me on Twitter, um, which is underscore J Streeter, J S T R E E T E R. Boom. There it is. There it is. Well, I, I definitely want to want to thank you for taking the time to to hang out with us on Beyond the Ball. And I also want to congratulate you, my man. I want I want to congratulate my man, newly engaged. Thank you. My man. Thank you. Thank you. The love of my life is a it's a definitely a good journey, man. I can't wait to live the rest of my life with you. So appreciate that so much, love. Most definitely, man. Most definitely. All, all the ballers out there, all the ballers, I would encourage you all just to just to connect with uh, Mr. Streeter here on this side. He's doing some uh, amazing things and phenomenal things, not only just in the life skills and programming with the student athletes, but man, he, he definitely has, has a bright future. He's a big time thinker. And I know he adds a lot of value wherever he goes. So be sure to connect with him and let let him know, you know, let him know how, how the podcast added value to you let him know if you dropped the gym and you was like yeah that was good that was good once again he's on instagram at spif three underscores and then on twitter underscore j streeter that's right underscore j streeter and everybody out there once again i'm gonna drop it one more time just so to make sure you all take advantage you can get this free ebook at bit.ly forward slash the number seven ways you can. The link is also in my Instagram bio at Jonathan Jones Speaks. We're on a mission right now to impact one million students' lives by 2024, helping them transition from college to career. We had Jeremiah Streeter on today as our guest. And until next time, my friends, share this podcast with one friend, one teammate, rate, and review the podcast we appreciate the love but until next time i'm jonathan jones and this is beyond the ball where we help you succeed beyond your degree mm-hmm.